A private member's bill from Conservative MP Russ Hebert that would force unions to open up their books is generating a lot of controversy. Remember, Mr. Hebert was on this show explaining what his bill 330, is 377, which cleared the House of Commons, is all about. It's now on its way to the Senate. It would force organized labor groups to provide detailed annual financial reports to the Canada Revenue Agency for anything over $5,000. The information would also be made public. Labor groups are outraged. They call this a blatant union-busting bill. And now Ontario's Labor Minister, Linda Jeffrey, has added her voice, writing a letter to the Senate that raises serious concerns about the proposed legislation. Does it serve only to disempower unions, or does it make sense to have more financial scrutiny for organized labor over certain levels? Let's go on the money to find out. Joining me now in Toronto, uh, Jim Stanford, economist for the Canadian Auto Workers, and with me here in studio, Ian Lee of the Sprott School of Business. Ian, let me start with you. The Ontario Labour Minister says the bill is, and I'll quote her, inexplicably intrusive. Uh, Canadian charities have to open their books. But as a, a member of the Conservative Caucus has said, I think it's uh, Mr. Rathgraber, who's a Labour lawyer, he said it's very different being tax deductible or tax deductible than a charity is this a good rule or a bad idea by Russ Hebert well I wrote an op-ed um, published in the Ottawa Citizen uh, five days ago it's time for transparency in unions uh, arguing uh, uh, contrary to Minister Jeffrey who uh, failed to disclose to the Senate in her letter in attacking this proposal she failed to disclose that the Ontario government, the government of Ontario, since 1991, has been annually disclosing hundreds and hundreds of thousands of Ontario people, including me, professors, uh, college instructors, school boards, hospitals, municipalities, province of Ontario, if you're over $100,000. This is the she, sunshine laws from Bob Ray's time. In, in fact, it was passed by Bob, and I want Jim to listen very closely. It was passed by Bob Ray at the time, in 1991, under the pressure from the unions who were demanding this sunshine bill because at the time they wanted to flush out the, what they called the fat cats, the, the, the people at the top, to give them more leverage at the bargaining table to get more wages for, for the rest of their, for their members. And so they pushed very hard for this sunshine law. It was put on the books. It is there to this day. Hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people get uh, 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 disclosed annually. And here's the Labour Minister of Ontario not even blinking an eyelash in even suggesting or noticing or notifying the Senate that they are doing the very thing well, that she says that the federal government should not be doing. They say that, and I talked to Russ Hebert about this, that on current labor laws already require transparency. Uh, Jim, what's your view on this? Do the existing laws have enough transparency, and it, or is this what's needed? So, you know, unions are aligned with other organizations that have to expose their, their finances. Well, first of all, uh, Evan, a union is not a government-funded agency. A union is a non-profit organization that collects members' uh, dues from its members and does not even receive subsidies from the government. So why are unions uh, being targeted for this? I mean, it's one thing if a government does want to expose uh, everyone on its payroll who makes over 100000 that's fine. Frankly, if that's all the government federally wanted to do with this bill, I don't think it would be an issue. I can tell you how much the president of our union makes, Ken Lowenza. It's on our website. It's published in our constitution. It's $155,000 a year, and frankly, he works for every penny of it. Uh, that's not the issue. This bill would require unions to uh, file a report, not just the national union, but every chapel, local, branch, or association, no matter how small. It could have three members. File a report uh, that's then sent to a new bureaucracy that has to be created in Ottawa and posted on a web detailing every amount over $5,000 that it's spent. I'm not aware of any other group uh, in society that is required to do that, certainly not business. We sit across the table bargaining from businesses, and a privately owned business doesn't have to disclose anything. So why are unions being uh, held up well, to this? Well, because Two they reasons. say it's tax deductible. Let me just show you what Russ Heber on this program said when I asked him about his bill. The taxpayer gives up $500 million a year in support of these institutions. Nobody's def doubting that they're valuable institutions. I've said that all along. But when the taxpayer, you and I, support institutions like charities or labor, inst or labor organizations or other institutions... I believe there's a corresponding obligation for accountability and transparency because it's our tax dollars that are being used to support them.
I'm saying Evan, because Evan. of the tax deduction. No, that's when no, the government's giving up. What do you say about there's that? No, there's no tax support to the union. That's absolute nonsense. Here's what happens. An individual on their tax return gets to deduct the union dues from their income, and then they pay difference on the net. That is a principle that's enshrined throughout our whole tax system. If I'm an investor, for example, I get to deduct the cost of my investment advisor, my safety deposit box, my management expense fees, any other money that I spent to make money, and in the same sense, a union member deducts the money they spent on union dues in order to get a higher wage that they pay uh, income tax on. So there's absolutely no government subsidy. It's a principle of if you spend money to make money, you pay tax on the difference. The true parallel here would be to require the Royal Bank and any other financial institution to disclose every $5,000 that they spend because their services are tax deductible by their clients, just like union members. Uh, I want to get, uh, uh, Jim isn't pull, putting the full picture on the table. He's suggesting that it's only unions. As I said in my op-ed, there are very large numbers of people in Canadian society that act as trustees or fiduciaries. A bank employee is a trustee because the bank deposits are not owned by that person. The union executives do not own the union. I don't own Carleton University. The person at Algonquin College doesn't own Algonquin. The person at the hospital doesn't own the hospital. So there are higher standards of accountability placed on trustees, whether you're the trustee of a bank bank account or the trustee of an incapacitated person because you're managing their affairs, you must disclose. But These is this unions, the same, uh, for example, would this be the same for a lawyer's group or, I mean, Jim said, this is not the same as a trustee. These are... These are even like a clubs, bank. even like a, a lawyer's club. Would that be the same? I, a bank I, doesn't have to disclose this kind of information. I would so, love to so see Jim. what the Royal Bank spends every $5,000 on. That would be a fascinating well, list. We're getting, and we're there's as much bugged. sense First to off, do that as there Jim, is for uh, this Ian. one. You're getting bogged down in the weeds. Let's set the 5000 aside. The salaries of every publicly traded company, the executive salaries, must be disclosed under the... The top under the five, o Ian. The top five. We will gladly disclose the top five. I've just well, disclosed progress. the top... That's that's progress. Yes, that's progress. I just disclosed the top one. It was on our website for years. All you had to do was go and look. But you hold don't on. Need just, just to, let me just be clear. I want to hear you. Under existing labor laws, though, any union member who pays their dues has the right to know any salary already. In other words, that's not, that's not accurate. Uh, that, that I, is I, will tell you, I will tell you the story. I'm a member of a union, by right. the way. Your, your people, your audience at home might be interested to know this. I'm a member of an academic staff association and they will provide financial statements if requested. If I make an appointment and go to the office at a certain time of the day, I can look at the financial statements. That is not real Bill disclosure. 115. That is fake disclosure. I want them on the website for everyone to see. And secondly, the financial statements are highly aggregated. There's a big lump some called salaries. Yeah, what does that like mean? Just like for corporate financial no, statements, no. it's exactly under the, 10K, the same under as the corporate SEC financial 10K, statements. You must disclose the salaries. I use this in my classes every term. My students have to go look up the so-called annual disclosure report of publicly traded companies. That's how they construct their research. And the research, they have to disclose 100 right. to 150 pages of the most intimate information about the corporation. Jim should go look at an annual corporate disclosure of I a do that. Okay, company. guys, I have, I have 30 seconds. Jim, Last word, is this about busting unions? Is it mischief or is it about the need for unions to be as transparent as other organizations? It isn't. Uh, it's trying to make unions uh, bogged down in this huge administrative burden and it's creating a huge new administrative burden for the federal government as well that will cost tens of millions of dollars. A private member's bill should not be a money bill, but this is a money bill. And it, the, the first step is to get unions all tied up in administrative baloney. But the second and long run goal is to have every critic of a union out there taking pot shots at every dollar that we spent on paper clips or a neighborhood soup kitchen or anything else. There is no other organization in society and certainly not business that's okay. held up to this standard. Union executives have the Leona Helmsley theory of politics. Little people can be paid taxes, little people get their salaries disclosed, but not big shots like union executives. That's what Jim is saying. That's the, George Orwell nonsense. said that all, all animals are equal, but some animals, call it union that's executives, just, are more equal rhetoric, than Ian. others. That isn't fitting, They don't want to be friend. disclosed like all the rest of us. I'm being disclosed. 55000 that's the uh, president. I make 120000 There's my uh, Evan, salary. Evan, very quickly, you. you know why they don't want to be disclosed? Because they know some, no, some maybe not Jim's union, but some unions are paying, I believe, although I don't know, obscene salaries. And they know that when that comes out, there's going to be a, revol a revolt and a rebellion from their own members. And in the court of public opinion, people are going to be saying, oh, my God, they're paying that amount to All those right. people? That's why they're fighting so hard. That's why they want to stop it.
Uh, Ian Lee, Jim Stanford. This is a passionate wow. debate about this uh, private member's bill. We've talked to Mr. Hebert about it. We'll continue this discussion. We'll watch where it goes. Thanks to Ian Lee. Thanks to Jim Stanford. Thank you, Evan.